Conversations as regards 2023 election takes a new turn as Babatsude Fashola urges APC leadership to respect the party's zoning arrangement. And Kaduna State Governor Nasir El Rafai blows hot against Northerners resisting the restructuring of the president's office. He says they are selfish. And this is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladenge. Welcome back. And to the issue, the first issue of the day. The Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, has asked the leadership of the APC to respect the zoning arrangement for the 2023 election agreed upon during the party formation. A statement comes amidst rumors that some members of the ruling party are planning to retain the presidency in the North. It has that the members keep the promises even though there was no written agreement. Joining us to discuss this particular topic, we have Bala Zaka, a public affairs analyst, and Femi Lawson, who is also a public affairs analyst. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Yeah, before we get uh, started into that conversation, we quickly want to let people know if you're watching Plots TV Africa, you can see it boldly scrolling on our screen that uh, Diego Armando Maradona, the Argentina legend, is dead. So he died at the age of 60 years. So before we go into the real politics, let's, let's try and do a bit of memory lane. Let me start with Zaka Bala. Uh, can you remember Diego Maradona and what comes to your mind when you hear about this death? Well, uh, when I heard about his demise, I just felt uh, we have lost a legend. Hmm. I mean, people like uh, Diego Amado Maradona were those that increased the interest in soccer. Hmm. They were those that really showed that soccer... It's not only a game, but it's also a profession that people can use and earn a living. Hmm. He was not only a mentor, but a source of inspiration to so many younger football stars that we see today. I, I, I sympathize with the sports community globally, and most importantly, I, I sympathize with, with FIFA, and I sympathize with uh, soccer lovers and uh, the football community uh, globally. Interesting, interesting. And um, Femi Lawson, yes, Diego Armando Maradona. Sometimes we remember that name. We love the style of football. But for some of us, we're like, this was the man that was more like an albatross to us as a country. Mm -hmm. Then we started having the, the, the mercy of this world. So what comes to your mind when you remember? Um... Sincerely, the, the global football community has lost uh, not just a legend. They have lost uh, a symbol you know, of the game of soccer. Maradona you know, symbolizes you know, soccer. When you mention those who are legends, you mention Pelé of Brazil. Then the next thing that comes to your mind is the name of Maradona, who throughout his lifetime dedicated, you know, all his focus not only to play soccer but to the good of soccer. And that's why even after retiring as an active footballer, he has continued to work, you know, in with Zero Soccer Academy, you know, to make sure that the game you know, lives even beyond him. So like I said, the world has lost a very important person. The sport community has lost a very important symbol. And I think generations to come will also come to know about that name and what it symbolizes as far as, you know, the gift, the talent, and the expertise of this game of soccer is concerned in the world. 
Awesome, awesome. I think uh, let's just wait for a news bulletin that comes up at 8 after this program. Then we hear more about uh, Diego Armando Maradona. I also join both of you to pay tribute to this great legend. I wouldn't forget that 1986 World Cup when oh. he, won, he single handedly won it for Argentina. And even in 1990, he was almost going to win that trophy for them before they lost narrowly to Germany. So much memories about Maradona. Let's come to a bit of politics now. Now, we, uh, we, 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 we saw that story about Fashola saying that, uh, please honor the 2023, you know, zoning arrangement. Guess what? He never mentioned any zone. He didn't even speak in details. He just said there was a plan about the party formation. Oh. Mr. Zara, Zaka, uh, tell me your preview to what he was trying to say. Tell us. Well, uh, before answering you directly, uh, I believe that oh, I see agreement as a commitment to fulfill an obligation, whether it is written hmm. or not. Hmm. And I see agreement as something that should be expected to be binding. Hmm. And I am somebody who believes in political balancing and economic balancing. As long as it is going to engender or endear equity and fair play and justice. So to that extent, if there was any understanding whatsoever, whether it was written or not, those who were involved in that understanding should see themselves as people who got themselves making commitments and by extension found themselves promising to fulfill an obligation, whether it is a political obligation or an economic obligation. Okay. As long as they are doing it or they were planning to do it, in national interest okay. and if they respect it and go ahead to implement it i think it will be good awesome i will always want our okay. leaders uh, to understand Bala, Bala that we'll, will have to i don't want you to exhaust all your all the views that you have for us that so i will take it short, short femi my worry is that let's look at who is making this statement i recall in the build up to the 2019 election uh, Fashola was also in the news about when he attended one meeting in Southwest and he gave them this impression that power should return to the Southwest. Are you seeing this statement from the angle of zoning to the South or micro zoning it to the Southwest? I'm sure you're privy to some of this information, Femi. Well, fundamentally, to me, the first thing that is always paramount to the average Nigerian politician is their interest even when they try to create an impression that it's about uh, a section or a group of people. It is usually because they look at what they can benefit if such arrangement, you know, have its way. In the case of, you know, the issue raised by the Mr. of, you know, works, uh, Mr. Matula, Raji Fashula, it is more to some of us an issue of interest because if Politicians are to be equitable, you know, just and fair. Some of them who occupy some of these positions today in the first place are not even supposed to be there. But because a lot of them are product of what they are trying to push against today, they are occupying these positions, you understand, and they think all is proper. So for me, honoring agreement, particularly as it regards zoning, is a moral issue. It is not a constitutional issue. Even today, the presidency of Nigeria has no constitutional rotational agreement. All these are conventions and issues, you know, laid on the altar of, you know, understanding with each group, you know, and interest. But I think what should be paramount to us as a people now is how far or how fair we are as a people as far as this journey in the past has been concerned. For these regions of the country that have been fortunate to produce this president, how fairly have they been treated? Because today, 
or yesterday they had the first place. Okay. At the time that this region of South Femi, West, Femi. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry for quoting in. Uh, I, I know what you stand for, and I can also even re-echo it over and over again. We've had a conversation on TV, outside TV, on radio, and several places. But we are looking at this other side of this issue when it comes to reality. Even in America, people will remind you that Obama becoming president was a way of saying that the blacks are part of America. Some will tell you that in different parts of the world, the issue of zoning is a reality. So I'm saying that in real sense, will it be a kind of integrity deficit if this agreement is not you know, it, it honored? Is not, yes, it is going to be a major integrity deficit for the major, particularly for the major political parties. You know, for a country that is multi-ethnic, multi-religious, like ours, it is very, very necessary that we practice in a soft system such as rotational, you know, leadership, you know, ruling the presidency in order. But what I am saying, you know, just like you alluded to, is the fact that even the people that are advocating to, for it today, I'm not doing this out of their the new, you understand, interest. I want to say that if anyone is interested about, you know, preaching equity to the political parties to not this agreement, the such cases must begin to, you know, be specific. Like, for instance, the Ushara is going to push the presidency to be in okay. this country today. Okay. It would be fair if such cases are saying, let us give the first piece, you know, a shot at the president. Okay, good. Femi, That's Femi, Femi, please. I, I'm trying to make sure that we explore the time we have. Back to you, Zala. Now, what Femi is saying, in essence, is it shouldn't come from this political class. That in whose interest is that? We had a conversation yesterday where two guests pointed that even the fact that um, maybe the South is never really voted for APC, but they seem to be enjoying more than when they've been voting for PDP. Why that is subjective. But I'm looking at, should it be about these politicians calling for it? In whose benefit will it be, Zaka? Well, as, as far as I'm concerned, first of all, from a political angle, you know, officially we have 774 local governments in right. Nigeria. I personally believe that there is no local government that cannot produce a focus and an organized leader. But in a situation where politicians in their usual political dynamics and miracles decide to come out who project political stooges or political liabilities, that is going to be a different ballgame. I am somebody who believes in equity and somebody who wants people to respect agreements. One of the reasons why Nigeria has no integrity in the international community or among the Committee of Nations is because most of the time Nigeria remains on agreement. And to a reasonable extent, that thing is also affecting us as individual Nigerians also. So if there is a given interest, interest is one thing, objectivity is another thing, okay. and unity is something completely different. And that was why I said, if it is going to be in the unity of the party, in the unity of the state, and in the unity of the nation, so be it. Okay. So on Aspect of the unity of the party, if within the party they feel it will foster and strengthen unity, please, they should not remain. They should honor it. Thank you very much. Femi, I, I say this from knowledge, and I, I, I can defend this statement now. Uh, prior to 2015 merger, when we had um, the uh, defund CPC, uh, defund AMPP, and the uh, ACN coming together to form a merger, now we have what we call APC. Prior to that time, there had been plans to have a kind of coalition 
And the problem has always been that how do we trust that you will fulfill your part of the bargain? I recall that one of the discussions then between the national leader of ACN and that of the CPC, Muhammad Buhari, was that, okay, we are going to give you some ministers. And he was like, no, if you give me ministers, you can fire them. You should rather give us vice president. That means it's a joint ticket. Now, that tells you that it took a lot. It took so much for these people to now come and form a party. And they killed their former party and formed the party. Don't you think so much was given to form that party and such words should be honored? Talking politically now. Femi. Well, like I said, it's a moral issue and people ordinarily are supposed to respect, even without any reminder, such agreement. But in our own situation, it's unfortunate that politicians have become very difficult you know, set of people that you can trust. They don't honor even manifesto to the people. So there's no way they will honor agreement made, you know, among themselves. People who cannot honor common agreements reached with the electorate cannot honor. But it's a moral issue. It is necessary that when agreements are made, they are respected. But in this case, why people are beginning to raise this question and again and again is because already, People are beginning to sense the tendency for betrayal of agreement. People are beginning to see people, elements from the north, that has held on to power for five years, that they're having a, a shot at, at the presidency for two terms. Elements that people are coming from that region from the same political party, you know, lobbying to the president again after the eight year of the northern president. And that's why you have seen such questions arising. So, ultimately, it should have been an issue that should be morally you know, respected. Okay. But because politicians have become very difficult people to to who, who, who really honor agreement and respect, then you continue to have these questions in Beautiful. Us. And that's Beautiful. Uh, uh, Zaka, I, I also give you a scenario that uh, is already uh, that is also in public domain. We can Google it and find out. I recall yeah. that some of these uh, leaders, I, I, I choose my word deliberately, some of these yeah. leaders t told us that there is nothing like zoning in our party. They said it publicly that mm -hmm. merit is our zoning arrangement. Competence mm -hmm. is our zoning arrangement. Good. They said it during election. So why shouldn't we focus on meritocracy rather than this, you know, a zoning arrangement that is being played up here? It's the most ideal. But the situation that we have found ourselves as a country that is still struggling to become a nation has demanded that the zoning become a part of the consideration while electing leader. Today we are in a country that is so polarized by religious and ethnic sentiment. If you can be in a country so united together in all purposes as a nation, then we can begin to talk about marriage. But well, today is a nation many, you tell you every, every zone has okay. candidates on many. But that for the purpose of equity and fairness, they have to be rotational. Okay, good. And when we are talking about rotational leadership, people must be genuine about it. It should not just be rotation from the north to the south. That we limit the set, the capacity to produce leaders to you know a particular set of ethnic nationality. But rather we should begin to look at an equitable rotation that is ensure that Okay. okay, Femi. Femi, let me let me also listen to Zaka. I, I actually actually wanted Zaka also to say something on that. Well, like you rightly said, you know, unless people decide to leave competence and they decide to go after mediocres and rookies or inexperienced people, like I said, even at local government level, all the 70, 774 local governments have competent people. But this time around, we are talking about a political party. A political party is just one constituency out of so many constituencies or so many other political parties. So what I am saying now, we are looking at a political party in this case. If that was the understanding Please, it should be respected. That is one. Then, if that was the understanding again, 
for moral reason also to set a good example for the younger politicians coming up they should also respect the terms of the agreement the only thing they have to do is to make sure they look for competent people in those zones that they want to go and probably see the leadership to. Because we are talking about an understanding where probably you said this time around, you will give me the, the ladder and help me to climb and sit up there within our party with an understanding that after my own term, Oteno, I will come down and willingly hand over the ladder and partake or support in us helping somebody else to climb the ladder and sit up there. That's my understanding of the agreement, whether written or not. And please, for equity, fairness, unity, and continued continuation of either our party or our relationship, I will expect that all stakeholders should respect it. But that does not mean while looking for somebody, we will put or push up the ladder to sit there. We will look, we will leave competent people and put mediocre. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, uh, Zaka, I, I, I am, I'm a bit, uh, I'm trying to make sure that uh, we bring down these uh, idealism to realism because there could be a way that two of them can merge together. Because w when I listen to both of you, I see you as people who want a very, very justiciable and uh, very sound leaders in the realm of power. But I will give you an example of a state like, um, maybe for example, like Abia, where you have former governor as senators. When you look at the three senators, we had one of them that was the SSG. We had one of them that was the governor. So it's always been a circle around themselves. And when we talk about these zoning arrangements, we are also likely to have same of the same. So how do we even throw up a system which seems to be, definitely that is going to be my next conversation with another set of guests. Do we have a system that will throw up this kind of leaders you're talking about? Because it that seems to be what you're saying. But in life, we need to understand that there will always be traitors and betrayers even among your children that you gave birth to, that went and all stayed and had a nine-month gestation with inside the same womb, it will be possible for one or two or some of the children to betray others. Betrayal is something that has always been there right from the beginning of life, even in holy books. When it comes to that, the fact that others become traitors and betrayers doesn't mean we shouldn't respect standards and ideals. We will always pray for good standards. We will always pray for something near perfection, but we will always know or accept that we can be betrayed. All traitors can okay. always come up. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, that might all actually be your last comment, but we'll come back to that. Let me quickly give Femi's... Uh, um, um, last comment on this. How does this thing translate to development for any of these zones? In, 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 in reality, no amount of rotation or some of these moral considerations can actually give you know, credible leadership that Nigeria desire to host, except that we begin to restructure our system and build strong institutions. It has been proven that the rotation, this concentration, ethnic religious concentration, and other concentrations that we have, you know, relied upon in electing leaders in this country have failed. And it is because we, are, we lack the institutions that can make them to achieve the purposes of government. So we must begin to look at how we can build strong institutions, how we can restructure our system, to accommodate you know, realities of good governance and welfare of the people. Until we do that, no amount of rotational agreement or whatever presidency you know, will give us the kind of nation we desire. And that is the truth. Thank you so much. And that was um, Femi Lawson, a public affairs analyst, and also Zala Baka.
<laughs> Sorry, Bala Zaka, who is also in public. You got it right. You got it 100%, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your insight. And trust me, we will continue this conversation on all our social media platforms. And then we'll be proud of uh, uh, leaders that will say this indeed is what we have elected into power. Thank you once again, gentlemen. Thank you. And to our viewers, we'll take a short break now. And when we return, Governor El Rufai of Kaduna State criticizes northern politicians fighting against restructuring in the country. We'll be right back. <laughs>